Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51% percent a show about women reshaping our world. In this special edition we're focusing on women in art. Frida Kahlo, Georgia O'Keeffe and Tracy Emin are among the very few who've managed to make a name for themselves, but so many in the past were not acknowledged or simply relegated to being a muse. So we're asking, has the push for gender equality well and truly reached the world of art? Behind me is the prestigious Ecole de Beaux-Arts here in Paris, which for centuries banned women from studying. But these days, it's a very different story, with the majority being women students. In Hélène Delpra's art class at the Ecole des Beaux-Arts, there are as many women as men. There's no gender divide between the painters and the painted, nor are these students afraid to interrogate gender through their work. It's a distinctly discrimination-free environment. We're all pretty young. We all want to prove ourselves. We're all groping around for answers, trying to find ourselves. I think it's the same for girls and boys. Her teacher agrees. As a female artist, she's never experienced any gender-based adversity. No, I've never had that problem. Probably because I've never made a huge deal of my gender. I've said whatever I've had to say. I've done whatever I've wanted to do. But I've never insisted on my sex either way, or indeed my so-called feminine qualities. But women haven't always been welcome here. Founded at the beginning of the 18th century, renowned artists including Carpeau, Ingres and Garnier passed through its doors. But it was only in 1897 that women were admitted to this temple of fine art scholarship. They said it was all about money. That's often the explanation people gave. They said they'd need a larger budget to be able to open the university to women. And then there's the matter of what was considered proper behaviour. It was very hard for people to accept that young women would be sharing classrooms with their male counterparts, sitting together in front of naked life models. At first, just one workshop was open to women, and they couldn't be around when the men were, an attempt to avoid impropriety. Male models, meanwhile, had to cover up during life-drawing classes when ladies were present. Only after the war did classes become mixed, and during the 60s, that women began to thrive. It's impressive to see just how many women started using video, photography, performance. They were relatively new modes of self-expression. All that weight of tradition, of patriarchal history, wasn't so present, wasn't making itself quite so heard. These days, the School of Fine Arts has more female students than male. After five years of studies, 23-year-old Leila has just received her degree. She's excited about what the future holds. I want to be recognized as a woman, as an artist, both at the same time. I think we need to proclaim that desire loud and clear. At art school, gender is no longer a barrier to success. Women here are intending to make their presence known not just in France, but across the world. Seven years ago, art curator Camille Morino created a massive buzz here in Paris when she established at the Somme Pompidou a permanent collection of women artists. She's also behind the non-for-profit organisation AWARE, whose aim is to reintegrate women artists from the 20th century into art history, and she joins me here today. Hello, Camille. Thanks Hello. for being with us. When we first came up with the idea of this uh, programme, I really had to scratch my head to think of three names of famous women painters. Why is that the case? Uh, because nobody knows about women artists. There's very few information about them. Even the museums don't have so much information. They don't have so much work in the permanent collection. And that's where I, I came from, in a way. I mean, myself, I wasn't so prolific 
uh, either. So uh, when I realized that, uh, I thought that there, there has to be some kind of revolution inside the institution to promote these women that I sort of knew were here, somewhere in the storage, in the books, uh, in the few testimonies. But there have been moments in history where women have been incredibly prolific in creating art. They have always been prolific. Um, my theory is that the uh, impulsion to be an artist is equally divided between men and women. So there's been as many uh, women artists as men artists, at least in the 20th century. The thing is that it was difficult for them to work. Uh, when they could work, it was difficult for them to show their work, to be um, shown in museum, to be shown in gallery, to be sold. They were lost in the narrative of history. So in a way, it's, uh, I, it's, it's like an historian job to find the trace of these women, to, to re-install um, them in, in the main course of, uh, of history. Now, Camille, in recent years, you've been pushing very hard for museums like the one behind you to include works of art by uh, women artists. How hard was it to get museum directors and others on board? It wasn't difficult. For Saint Pompidou, uh, it was, I think the, the institution was ready for that um, in, in many ways. And when I uh, showed up with this crazy idea, the director, Alfred Pacman, was actually really happy and interested uh, and said, yes, uh, I think it's a good moment to do it. Uh, the thing is, it started from a small event to a long one, uh, from a few months to two years, because somehow the response of the public of the press was amazing. You describe it as a crazy <laughs> idea. Why do you say that? Yes, because at the time it sounded really crazy because there had been uh, exhibitions with women artists. But the fact that the museum would devote the permanent collection space, that is sort of very symbolical space where history is written every day and that people expect history to be there. And the fact that this per permanent collection space would be only for women artists was a little crazy at the time. Camille, with the lack of women artists being displayed in museums like this one, not only in Paris but across the world, how has that impacted society in general? Well, they were invisible to, to anybody, to the large public. Uh, so people thought that there were no women artists because they were not in museums. And suddenly, if they show up in the permanent collection, it means they're back in history. So it's extremely symbolical and important uh, to show them in museums and in permanent collections, not only in exhibitions. So these days, how widespread is sexism in the art world? I think it's less a problem today, really, because now a lot of curators, uh, gallerists and even artists are aware of the problem, the fact that they have been women artists, they were not shown properly, they're not visible enough. So a lot of people, uh, historians, gallerists, are working on that subject and trying to go back in the past and find these women artists who have been working and who haven't been shown enough. Camille Morano, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Thank you. While art these days is beginning to embrace diversity with a passion, there's still one domain that women are struggling to access, and that's the world of street art, as Julia Seeger explains. An ordinary house that hides a series of extraordinary art pieces. Under the foliage is the work of a street artist. Her name is Jomad. She started tagging 10 years ago. It gives a different impression compared to a traditional painting because gestures and space is also very important. Your body has to be in tune with the art piece that you're creating. Today, Jomad is painting the walls of this abandoned house that's about to be demolished. Female taggers like herself have scaled fences, broken the law and sometimes risked their lives for an art form that is by nature temporary. Most of them say they're in it for more than infamy. They want to even the score. It's a very sexist environment where everyone must fight for their spot. Because I'm a woman, I have to work more, paint more, think more and observe more. There are many women taggers, but we make high-quality art. Slaps, stencils and throw-ups, Jomad knows all the different types and styles of graffiti. 
It motivates me even more to know that men think women can't tag. I see it as a challenge, as a way to surpass myself. It gives me the will to become better than them. Women that are fighting stereotypes. We met with several of them at a street art exhibit in Paris. Sani is 30. From New York to Sydney to Berlin, she's traveled the world to make a documentary about the female graffiti movement. From Czech Republic, which is a country which was uh, 42 years under the communism regime, uh, so girls, they were not uh, really supported to be emancipated. And uh, when the communism fell, we were fascinated by all cultures from Western Europe. People were telling me, you can't make it because you're a girl. So then we were like, do I need peanuts to write graffiti and so? It's taken some time, but today street art is no longer the exclusive boys club. In the US and Europe, graffiti art is being increasingly taken over by women and girls. Elsewhere, like in Russia, India and the Middle East, however, the battle is far from over. And that's it for this special edition. If you'd like to comment on what you've just seen, you can head to our Facebook page, that's Trans24, full stop, the 51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. Thanks for your feedback so far, and please do keep those comments coming in. So until our next show, bye for now.